Hello and welcome to today's class regarding TILIS. Uh, so today we will be considering discussing about TILIS and its impact on the overall growth performance of a crop. So let us get into the terminology first. So basically TILIS as per the dictionary meaning it means the preparation of land for crops or especially crop bearing and uh, while we can just define it as the physical manipulation of soil environment for good tilt now you need to consider this terminology tilt and that tilt is required for better germination settling stand and subsequent crop growth and development so when we look into these words the till is the tilt so we need to consider where did it first arise from so it would mark to Jethro Tull in 1731 in his book Horsewing Husbandry where he first indicated that till is the most important part in the crop production process because at that time the, it was conceptualized that uh, the plants actually was taking up fine soil particles uh, for its growth and development so it was always considered that the finer you make uh, the soil the better it is for the plants because it would be easier for the plants to uptake finer particles of the soil so it was uh, a wrong concept rather but it gave a, a contribution in the section of agriculture mechanization because there were a lot of machineries being built up right from those days um, in order to make the soil as fine as possible so it has a great impact on the overall mechanization of agriculture however it was not true that the plants would take soil particles itself rather they will uptake water nutrients and everything required from the soils so it was initially uh, only uh, art but rather in the recent days it is more focused as science because we got to read the, or study the relationships between its um, between how we are doing that to what we are achieving from that so that's quite a relationship that we are studying this day so um, it's both art and science uh, to be very frank so um, there have been a lot of developments since the mid 90s uh, after the war so there are a lot of uh, development um, based in agriculture especially after green revolution and everything so we have been targeting even in tele systems how we can prioritize and the overall the concepts or the systems of TLAs have changed drastically from in this last 50 70 years so be um, talking about uh, the objectives so why do we conduct TLAs so there are a lot of uh, objectives of TLAs because um, it functions in a wide array of areas so um, in the overall crop management aspect when you look into so there would be a marked uh, functions that the tillage would accomplish so in general to list out the objective so I would go into the first one as improving the soil structure by breaking the soil masses clods into loose particles so that we can do all the sowing operations we can just sow the seeds or the planting materials whatsoever similarly to provide adequate soil aeration soil aeration is another important aspect as we know that soil do include both moisture as well as air in it so that air is very much required for root growth and development similarly oxidative decomposition or we could say it as mineralization of organic matter similarly uh, for the air for microorganisms and other organisms residing in the soil similarly another very important aspect in the present day uh, agriculture is disintegration of chemicals being applied into the uh, crop system so that is that is very essential on the part of soil aeration similarly another very important objective of tillage is to provide adequate seed soil contact so that would come up only when we have a very good soil tilt 
Similarly, um, another important thing when we are continually doing agriculture, so there are a lot of chances that we are creating uh, very hard soil surfaces, compacted layers, which would uh, really have an impact on the overall crop performance. So uh, we need to break those hard pans for seedling emergence, similarly uh, root growth and penetration, and uh, reducing the runoff by increasing the infiltration so that would account into as an objective of tillage similarly uh, seed sowing so that is a very preliminary aspect that we have been doing simultaneously tillage is very important to remove weeds and different propagation propagation part, um, parts or propagules i would say so for a clean cultivation it's quite important simultaneously management of plant residues the previous crop residues are also very important nowadays there is a concept that we just leave the residues on the surface but many a times they have been incorporated in the soil when you look at the conventional tillers practices simultaneously um, when we apply the manures uh, fertilizers so we need to incorporate that back into the soil so that now we would uh, reduce its losses so for that we require tillers similarly uh, when we are doing tillers in especially adverse climatic condition especially during the summer uh, we tend to expose the insect pest eggs pupa and fungal spores uh, up to the surface of the soil where they are solarized so uh, it would really reduce the overall um, biotic constraints in a farming system or in a crop system tillers also signifies um, different con configurations for sowing irrigation drainage so whatever is going to be done into the crops so we will manage we tend to manage uh, tillers as per our intercultural requirements similarly uh, tillers also serves especially the present uh, mm, concept of tillers is majorly focused into um, conservation of different resources in farming um, whether that be water resources that be the soil resources everything and water resources conservation is a very very important um, criteria this day so thereby there are different systems of tillers where they are targeting to conserve the soil moisture now coming to another terminology that we had acquainted earlier so it's soil tilt so what is tilt so tilt is generally the qualitative characteristics of the soil so when we talk about a very good soil tilt so we will consider a very good quality regarding sowing practices so that uh, there will be a better amount of germination there will be a better amount of um, plant stain later on in the field so that's the uh, major quality that we would be always looking into so it generally expresses the physical condition of the soil uh, um, considering the distribution of soil aggregates similarly uh, friability of soil so that would be uh, a very important aspect but however we need to consider always that soil is always uh, exhibiting temporal dynamicity that means it will not be the same throughout the crop period it will tend on it will go on changing for example sometimes uh, there would be a very flocculated soil at a time of sowing and it will later on sediment into it will just make some aggregates and it will just function in a better way later on in the season again when there are hard pan formation again there would be requirements of um, some energy in order to disrupt those larger aggregates make it very easy for the crops to um, reside on that particular soil so it will always be exhibiting temporal dynamicity now considering the types of tillers there are a bunch of types of tillers that are uh, basically categorized as per but however it's uh, it's only based on when we are doing and how we are doing the tillers operations whatsoever so generally we classify tillers into on-season tillers off-season tillers and special purpose tillers the on-season tillers is 
uh, the tiller is being conducted at the time when we are trying to uh, produce a crop or so a crop so in general the on season tillers will comprise preparatory tillers and inter tillers the preparatory tillers itself means the preparation of the land in order to sow a crop that will comprise of primary and secondary tillers and inter tillers are any tillers operations conducted in between the crop growth so as the interculture whatever tillers operations we are doing so that would be considered as a inter tillers simultaneously off season tillers as i mentioned earlier about the biotic constraints management so there are a lot of times that um, people tend to uh, go on with tillers operations not during the crop production period rather in the off season so that could come up as post harvest tillers as summer tillers as winter tillers as fallow tillers so it will all have a different function altogether similarly sometimes all these tillages might not be enough so at those times a very critical period we need to understand the circumstances and at that time we would just perform different sorts of uh, operations like subsoiling leveling blind tillages wet tillages mulch tillages contour tillages so these are all the forms of special purpose tillers that we call as and when we look at the last two the minimum tillers zero tillers these are rather conceptualized as a conservation tillers operation so we will be talking about that later in this uh, class so we have already discussed about the on season tillers preparatory tillers so let us come on to primary tillers so primary tiller generally um, considers the idea of opening up of the soil like when you have a field so you got to sow a crop then you are just to start up into uh, the operations of tillers so at that time the first opening up is the primary tillers and as we know when the soil would stay for a longer period uh, so there will be a lot of uh, aggregates in the soil so that needs a higher amount of energy for the soil to be inverted the weeds to be uprooted and all these troubles incorporated in the soil so that's the primary objective of primary tillers to invert the soil so for that they will require uh, basically you know, a higher amount of energy so it is not always done but uh, that all depends upon the type of the soil whether you have a very you know, coarse textured soil you have a very fine soil which are generally very heavy in it the heavier the soil the more energy would be required uh, in order to invert and do everything and many a times when you are continually practicing agriculture or, uh, you have a extensive uh, intensive agriculture system at that times may mm, you might not always require the primary tillers operation so that is uh, on the other hand so how could we perform primary tillers so as i already mentioned that it is heavier uh, machinery is requiring so these are some of the things that we consider when it comes to primary tillers like the chisel plow the mold bird plow or mb plow we generally tell that similarly fail mower disc plow um, subsoiler subsoiler is not exactly it's it's a primary tiller however but it is not very uh, much used Uh, in a regular basis they are generally prioritized in number of years when um, they feel that on the subsoil uh, the subsoil means anything less than uh, let us say 30 cm to 40 cm deeper layers of the soil and when there are hard pan formed on those uh, areas it will result into decreased root penetration decreased infiltration and at those times we need to break the uh, hard pan or the compacted layers on the lower surface or the subsoil layers at that time we generally uh, try and use the subsoilers Sim similarly subsoil plow rotary plow so these are all the primary tillers operations and they are quite heavy machineries that are requiring more power similarly secondary tillers when we perform the primary tillers there would be a whole bunch of clods and crust on the surface so we all need to uh, is break those clods crust uproot all the weeds that are required all the crop residues and simultaneously incorporation of all the manures or fertilizers that we are 
to apply similarly giving the land the final touch for sowing the crop so those all operations are included as secondary tillers many a times we need to create furrows like when we are cultivating potato in nepal majorly we are dealing about furrow system so it will act as irrigation channel when there is less moisture when there is huge amount of moisture the uh, furrows tend to uh, turn into uh, or act as drainage channel so these are all the ways as a final touch of now for how we are going to grow the crop so that's all about the secondary tillage so these require relatively lighter implements because we don't need to upturn the soil rather we are just working on the soil that is already being primarily tilled so general in nepal we see cultivators and harrows coming into the scene for secondary tillage operations uh, still there are a lot of other implements that could be used um, uh, as a secondary tillage implement like when we consider the seed drill they are only functioning to place the seeds right into the soil uh, right into the sowing depth similarly spike tooth harrow uh, rotary trills bond makers reagers land laborers these are all considered to be the implements of um, secondary tillers uh, except the harrow and cultivator which are very very common in nepal as well similarly coming to intertillers like i mentioned previously uh, there are many a times that we do intercultural operations uh, in the soil itself so um, the intertillers will account on all the operations or all the soil manipulating operations that are conducted uh, in the soil uh, after the crops are being placed or after the crops have begun to grow so there might be placement of fertilizers in the middle of the season which we call as top dressing of fertilizers similarly intercultural hoeing there would be weeds growing on we need to control those weeds similarly many crops would require earthing up operations so these are all the soil manipulation that is occurring uh, in the season after the crop ha is grown so those all operations fall into intertillers and many a times um, the hoes different type of hand hoe are used in uh, manual agriculture similarly in mechan in mechanization we could use uh, all these sorts of the interculture operations working on you could see in the figures that we are just uh, working on that particular matter uh, with all the like it is the earthing up operation being done it is the inter row tillers being done this is what we call as a very uh, easy handheld cano weeder so when the weeds come in between so they just uh, uproot the weeds and just incorporate the weeds into the soil itself isn't it like i uh, said it is not done in the season that we are targeting into but rather into the off season where we are targeting different other functions of the tillers like we could be you know, just trying to label the land we could be trying to leach the accumulated salt from the soil similarly we are trying to um, work on the seasonal water table we are trying to reduce uh, different weeds in the soil similarly we are trying to get rid of different insect pests havoc into the soil so it needs to be performed in the off season and there are a lot whole bunch of ways to do into uh, majorly categorizes post harvest summer winter and fallow tillers now coming to special purpose tillers there are a lot of things that could be done which is not very regular but could be done um, once in a while in order to perform specific objectives like for example wet tillers or what we call as puddling like in rice when we are growing rice we want the water to be um, completely stagnant on the field therefore we built up buns to hold the water but when you compare the same uh, amount of rain falling on the maize field and the rice field in rice we do a lot of tillage operations in order to make the water stand on the field itself so for that we do the puddling or the wet tillage operations so in general puddle means creating a soil layer uh, 
where it's water impermeable so that the water doesn't fall below into as a gravitational water as a result of infiltration deep down so in that what we do is we generally put a whole lot of water and continue with our tillage operations such that we will just crush every bits of uh, soil particles into such fine particles so that such that they will go on filling up the pore spaces into uh, by blocking all the pore spaces so that the water won't get into the soil into the deeper layers so in general there are two phases what we say is the first one is increasing the moisture content which will result in decreased cohesion in the aggregates and thereby the clay will become swollen and will become soft to be worked under and similarly there will be a lot of mechanical uh, operations on the soft soil and we will just cross it to as fine particles as possible such that they will block all the pore spaces going down so Puddling generally would function a lot of works, especially in country like ours where we are so much uh, um, into rice cultivation and our rice majorly is the transplanted lowland rice which we uh, cultivate in uh, the stagnant water. So for those purposes, it will reduce the non-capillary pore space and close packing of soil that will decrease eventually decrease the hydraulic conductivity and free percolation percolation means the deeper infiltration of water so that's a gravitational losses of water simultaneously when the hydraulic conductivity is reduced the drainage would be very very slow from those uh, soil and another very important thing in rice uh, cultivation in the wet tillage or the puddle tillage is uh, that we will achieve a better deal of weed control like for example when we uh, let me clarify that there are so many of the crops that you know about but how many crops do you know that would grow under stagnant water condition hardly one that you know that's rice so basically there are so many of the weedy species so we can be very much sure that not all weedy species are going to survive that particular water logged environment so it will achieve a very high amount of weed control and simultaneously soil conditioning for easy transplantation especially of the rice seedlings so uh, simul another very important advantage is puddle soils tends to have 2.5 percent as higher efficiency in water use as compared to non puddle soil so the water required during the crop cultivation also tends to reduce however we are not taking into account the amount of water being used um, for the puddling operation so there there is a uh, quite a relative amount of water being required in the puddling as well Similarly, there are other concepts like minimum tillage these days. So uh, you don't need to till the soil as much as required. Rather, you could reduce that uh, number of operations to a minimum such that uh, you would ensure a better uh, seed bed for the crops to be sown. So this, these are fairly a new concept in Nepal. However, it's not globally because in the states uh, uh, they have been practicing the minimum tillage, the conservation tillage, zero tillage since uh, I guess it's 80s, 70s, 70s, 80s. So they have been doing that for quite a long time now and they have a, a very good results regarding the conservation tillage, the minimum tillage, but we are only practicing it to a number of crops only. Why do we need to decrease um, the number of operations of tillers? So that's all about the impacts of tillers that uh, generally comes onto the field, that com comes into the finance of the farmers, that comes into different soil um, environment or soil properties. So those advantages needs to be um, harnessed by minimum tillers, which would obviously be the disadvantage of the uh, conventional tillage or the very high amount of tillage that we have been practicing so that will tend to save a lot of power energy labor and everything Simil similarly it will just have um, when it will have an impact that when you are coming to a 
crop rotation what we call like when we are growing one crop it is on the harvest stage and it's already time for another crop to be grown so at that time if you are to do tillage so it will take a whole bunch of time in the in between the crops so at those times lowering the amount of tillage would be a very beneficial uh, um, practice in order to, uh, um, to timely plant those crops so it is an alternative to conventional tillage system especially in areas where um, there is a whole lot of uh, soil erosion occurring whether that be via the air via the we uh, via the water so any source of erosion so it's 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 a very particular in those areas so it will tend to improve the soil conditions because uh, here we are talking about uh, the less you cultivate or the less you till the soil there will be a higher amount of residues in the soil so that would just uh, place a lot of um, residues in situ and that will help in decomposition so ultimately eventually uh, the soil conditions are to be improved similarly infiltration uh, increases and uh, runoff decreases due to different decomposition of the biomass so that will add up organic matter to the soil so it will just increase the infiltration and reduce the uh, runoff and sim similarly in a time duration it is to improve the soil structure because the because of the increased organic matter the soil structure is eventually going to improve however there are a few disadvantages like uh, sowing would not be very easy because there will be a lot of residues on the surface so surface residues would hamper uh, it would not be easy to sow the crops similarly uh, minimum tillage when we are talking about uh, reducing the tillage now what we need to understand is tillage primarily has an objective of managing the weeds so weeds are controlled by tillage but now when we are reducing the amount of tillage there will be a whole bunch of weeds in the system so there would be uh, use continuous use of herbicides herbicides are with the chemicals that we use in order to control the weeds so that would always in be in a higher range as compared to the conventional system similarly seed germination would be problematic because many a times uh, the tilt is not as conducive as we would require in uh, minimum tillage similarly many a times what happens is uh, there would be uh, when there is a slower rate of uh, organic matter decomposition many of the applied nitrogen externally applied nitrogen would go into the microbes uh, the microbes will tend to take those nitrogen in order to multiply and go on with the decomposition which we generally call as um, immobilization so that would occur for an instance so that will have a impact that when you are first practicing all these systems uh, there would be a higher nitrogen demand uh, for the crops as compared to the conventional system similarly uh, when we are trying to reduce there is a point when we call it as zero tillage where we are um, not disturbing the soil at all we are just uh, disturbing only the places only the sites where the seeds are to be placed only that is disturbed except that we don't try and um, manipulate any types uh, any soil uh, in the concern of zero tillage so we have been practicing that for years i guess now uh, especially in wheat in garlic so you have you must have heard about zero till wheat zero till garlic which are very popular these days in nepal so uh, they don't actually do any sorts of tillage operations rather go and scrap the seed areas and just place the seed right out there so there might be a couple of implements required for that and that's how we conduct so it's it's more like a mechanized system uh, because it's 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 quite tedious to be done manually so in mechanized system there are generally four operations which are concluded at once so they first of all there are machineries which will clean a very narrow strip for cropping and similarly opening of the soil in that strip for seed inser insertion placing of the seed and covering of the seeds properly so that is whole bunch of activities is done at once and then 
we just leave it and manage the weeds by uh, the herbicides and the herbicide requirement would be quite on a higher side uh, in zero tillers so it will have a lot of advantage however because uh, it will be a very natural mulch regarding the residues coming up from the crops so that will help in reducing the erosion uh, increasing the infiltration managing the soil fertility in a uh, time period similarly undisturbed soil uh, will have a better soil structure uh, improving all physical chemical biological properties of the soil however many times problem might come in problem soils because um, if that is uh, there might be uh, acidity going on climbing in a time period or otherwise alkalinity going on climbing or salinity going on climbing in a period of time when the soil is not uh, tilled or not cultivated for a time period so that will eventually um, make things um, problematic so uh, in a span of three to five years we can just practice um, conventional tillers uh, once in a while when required uh, with all the activities that needs to be done like when if it is all about the climbing acidity we could just go on with liming if it is climbing alkalinity uh, we could just go on with the application of gypsum if it's climbing salinity we could just uh, till the soil do all the leaching operations that needs to be done to reclaim the soil so even we could do those reclamation practices once in a while but you could go on with zero tillage in a uh, long term basis like a, it's a two three years or four years rotation you could just go on if there is no problems whatsoever in the concert but you need to fix the crops that would really really um, response to all these environment and now coming to the disadvantages so in disadvantages as we all know Seedling establishment would uh, be problematic because we are here not talking about uh, very good soil tilt or something like that. Uh, similarly, um, it uh, reduces labor cost, but crowd work into certain time period immediately prior to planting. Before planting, there would be a uh, sort of work required for that. Similarly, land reclamation is a very big problem when it comes to uh, the zero tillage operation like i said when there is uh, some problem soils we need to reclaim it then we, we go we opt to go for the uh, conventional tillage similarly another major impact the zero tillage has shown is increased soil moisture so that would soil moisture would eventually increase due to increased organic matter increased infiltration and everything but when the soil moisture is increased then that will tend to leach the water soluble basis and that is replaced by hydrogen ion so eventually in a t t long term in a, over time uh, there would be uh, increased acidity in the soil so similarly uh, another big impact is when we are just leaving into the crop residues there are a lot of um, insect pest uh, disease pathogens and everything that could be harboring in the uh, plant residues so that could uh, be a problem uh, when it comes to uh, management of crop residues in zero tiller so that that is essentially a problem and we need to really monitor all those things and now mulch tillers it's a uh, it's a it's a tra type of a conservation tillers practice where they are saying okay you got to um, not completely clean the field rather all the crop residues must be on the surface as a mulch material so that it will just reduce um, the impact of soil erosion uh, it will reduce the soil erosion itself and it will increase infiltration and do blah 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 all these good things to the uh, soil so not always practice but it's uh, very much similar but only uh, very much similar to that of uh, minimum tillers but the only difference being that uh, in mulch tillers we just have a heck lot more crop residues on the surface as compared to a very classical minimum tillers now all these practices when summed up are 
categorized as Tillis system. So it's a nature and sequence of Tillis operations uh, for preparing land for crop production. So these are generally uh, classified into two groups, the conventional Tillis system, um, the ones we have been practicing that, uh, okay, you just go on with the primary Tillis and then do the secondary Tillis, make the field very clean and just go on with the crop cultivation practices. And on the other hand, there is conservation Tillis system, which would just opt to go for minimum Tillis, strip Tillis, zero Tillis, mulch Tillis. So you it would just suggest that you need to have minimum minimum of 30 percentage of crop residues right on the soil surface so that it would just decrease all the um, decrease all the um, disadvantages uh, that are incurred due to conventional tillage system so it's not that conventional tillage system do not have its advantages there are a lot of advantages like when it comes to soil compaction, the easiest way to overcome soil compaction is the conventional tillage. You go on with the primary tillage, go on with the deep tillage, just crush the soil. So eventually there is no compactness now. So that's very important uh, concern regarding conventional. Similarly, when we are applying manures and fertilizers or doing other agronomic operations in between uh, the crop period, so we all would uh, agree on that okay it's need to be incorporated into the soil so incorporation into the soil that's very much genuinely a part of conventional system similarly uh, another thing is when there is a clean cultivation all the biotic concerns that we talked about like the insect pests the disease causing pathogens they they would be just exposed uh, to the open surface. So there would be over summering, over wintering of all these uh, biotic constants and eventually reducing their um, havoc in the overall system. However, there are a lot of disadvantages associated like when it is very clean, it is subjected to degree of soil erosion. Similarly, the, with heavy tillage implements, in the long run, it's it's a, it's a major cause of soil compaction. Uh, similarly, um, it's it's a very high in cost because uh, many of the researchers so almost around or even more than 30 percent is of the cost of a crop is by tillage system. So tillage would in come in in incur around 30 percent of the total cost of cultivation so it's it's quite expensive when we are doing all these operations and what happens is when we are just uh, doing uh, tillage operations every now and then uh, so it would generally reduce the soil organic matter because um, organic matter would just be used or would just be um, utilized in the form of plant nutrients so simply it will just do not add up but rather uh, use up all the uh, soil organic matter so it's not not very wise um, when you link these things into uh, the proper nutrient management scheme or the soil conservation scheme or all these uh, green schemes that uh, the present world requires similarly another conservation tillage when we are doing conservation tillage systems we are firstly uh, conservation we are trying to conserve everything that's soil itself the soil water we are trying to conserve the cost of the producers we are trying to um, conserve uh, the overall um, agro ecosystem as a whole so that means reducing erosion is a major co concern regarding here uh, similarly infiltration increase and moisture conservation similarly increasing of the soil organic matter in the run um, conservation or reducing the cost of tillage so these are all the major impacts or advantages that the conservation tillage systems come up with. So this figure can majorly just show you three different systems, no-till, conservation tillage, and conventional tillage. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, just a, um, a representation of long-term research is conducted uh, in the U States uh, by different scientists. So they, they just came up with this uh, figurative description about what happens and how these are generally uh, doing work uh, especially in the corn belt of states so this is how it works and for further reading i would just uh, uh, like you to go on with this particular 
uh, link uh, so that you can just read about what's conservation delays, what conventional delays, uh, how are the differences. It's a review article, so uh, especially in the Indian subcontinent in the Southeast Asia. So. Uh, South Asia, I would not say Southeast Asia, sorry. So South Asia, so uh, how things are going on since uh, years that, and how are the impacts regarding uh, the impacts on environment, impacts on soil, impacts on cost of production and everything. So it is a very easy, very short literature review. So you can just go into and have a better reading and conceptualize that. And for anything else, so we, we could just um, have some, uh, I would just uh, place this in the slides.